स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया now uh, if you see from the computation engine the processors okay so uh, is is the basic computation engine and and as you know that uh, you cannot uh, increase the clock speed any more due to the end of donut scaling and 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 the power wall is hitting and that's why you cannot get more than a particular fixed clock frequency that is available nowadays in the in the processors or or computation engines so how we will get much more compute density uh, so at, in in terms of speed we want to increase the density as well as computation engine because you have to have the flexibility of including more number of transistors in a chip so that is that is fine and in terms of uh, clock speed also you cannot increase the clock speed anymore so compute density you cannot increase uh, after a certain limit so what the traditional systems or or or, or the modern systems uh, are uh, going towards uh, is that this uh, heterogeneous computing so where you have the serial tasks or or mostly the parallel workloads okay which which are not that much of data intensive they are being uh, controlled or they are being executed by the processor itself so that might be multi core processor single core processor so in this particular figure you are seeing that it has a, a dual core processor now uh, also in addition to to processing engines to uh, get the data parallel workloads executed we have specialized computing engines and these specialized computing engines are called accelerators of course uh, you you will see several accelerators that are being used uh, for for particularly ai benchmarks uh, nowadays but in this slide uh, uh, you can see that one gpu is there to uh, to handle this data parallel workloads right and one such accelerator or or specialized system that you have seen in the last slide is cerebras wafer scale engine right so now the tradition is what divide your task into different sub tasks and of course uh, this this uh, the data parallel workloads so mostly this ai benchmarks that we are talking about so from the ai benchmarks perspective this ai benchmarks or ai algorithm those will be executed by these accelerators so that is why we are talking about gpus and uh, because uh, because of what that you will see in the in the in the subsequent slides but the main, main important thing is that we have now accelerators uh, 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 in the system in the computing system uh, with along with the processors okay so that is that is the main uh, takeaway from this slide so now what kind of uh, accelerators that are available nowadays so we talk about specialized computation engines for ai benchmarks right and over the years that you can see here uh, uh, this graph shows uh, uh, the trends from 2012 to 2020 uh, and and you can see now different computation engines okay so we will we'll discuss them very briefly here so what we have we have asics so asics are asic engines or application specific integrated circuits okay so uh, these asics are mostly specialized like highly specialized only for the ai benchmarks and also we have gpus available in this uh, in this graph now gpus can give you the flexibility to run it. both ai benchmarks as well as let's say video or graphics uh, benchmarks as well okay so 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 now you you can you can us uh, you can just try to realize like how much generalized way of computing that can have so you have the processors which are very very generalized so maybe the uh, 
uh, the you can say the general purpose computing engine like you can do everything in the computing uh, in your processors now you have asics which are highly specialized only for uh, only for ai benchmarks here we talk about ai based asics of course for any other application domain you can have different asics as well and we have gpus which are graphics processing unit graphical processing unit so which has now nowadays have the flexibility of uh, uh, accelerating your uh, ai benchmarks as well why that we will see in the in the coming slides but you can see here what are the things available here so a6 gpus with with fp32 so what is fp32 that is floating point 32 now this is data type okay. so uh, now data type and the accuracy that you have seen for the ai benchmarks have very close relations okay. so that relationship we will talk about and you have your uh, gpu int also 8 int 8 means 8 bit integer units okay gpus with 8 bit integer units gpus with 32 bit floating point units so 32 bit floating point units means single precision floating point units you can have double precision floating point units as well which will be then 64 bits right and these asics are a highly customized uh, bit level implementation of computing systems for ai benchmarks and that is why you can see that the performance density is much higher in these asics okay because uh, they are only speci specialized in running ai benchmarks only for given uh, uh, data type of given precision okay so their performance uh, density or gops per millimeter square performance per area is is much more higher gpu is a much more generalized in terms of it, it can both accelerate your uh, uh, AI benchmarks as well as your uh, video processing as well, graphics processing, and it has uh, it has almost closer uh, uh, or, or, or or almost similar of performance density that is uh, being achieved nowadays. And and the trend you can see right. So this uh, this yellow line is the trend for your GPU AP32, which is almost generalized uh, gpus that you can get in the in the in the market nowadays and and very uh, uh, few are so basically if you see that integer 8 so basically these are with having these gpus with rtx 2080 t4 v100 so these are also having the flexibility to run your uh, fixed point 8 bit right uh, units now, what is the relationship I was talking about between the accuracy of the uh, benchmarks, AI benchmarks, and the bit precision? Okay, so the more you have or, or more precision available in, in the computation for your AI benchmarks, the accuracy will be higher. So this is the simple relationship. Now, how you want to get a higher computing density? You can reduce the size of, of the feature size feature right so uh, you can in the in this box here you can see that different sizes of feature map that is available now you want to have much more gops per millimeter square okay so that is you, you want to accommodate much more compute or, or you want to achieve much more compute density uh, 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 available for your systems so you will go for a uh, uh, lower uh, uh, lowering your feature size which is let's say seven nanometer or eight nanometer that is available that is CMOS technology that is being uh, used to to manufacture these chips like uh, uh, a v100 series of uh, nvidia gpu and 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 also uh, around 28 nanometer is being used for this dadian nano this is one asic based version of uh, dian nano which was published in the year of 2014 and in 2016 tpu was published okay so first version of tpu so this is tensor processing unit published by google and uh, that is also asic based okay and uh, you have cambricon 
uh, IRIS. This was published from the uh, research group of MIT. EIE, so several ASIC based implementations are there that you can see and they, uses, uh, they use several uh, feature map size. So basically the size of these diamonds specify what kind of uh, uh, feature map they are using. Now with decreasing the feature maps, that means you can accommodate more compute uh, units inside your chip, right? So that means you can increase the performance density cops per millimeter square, right? So how far you can go? Of course, you cannot go beyond certain limit. So feature map size or, or technology scaling, you cannot do, uh, let's say beyond uh, one nanometer nowadays, uh, you cannot go beyond that, right? So that means there is a, a certain level of uh, uh, performance, per, uh, performance density that you can achieve. So there is a limit that you can achieve. Okay? So that is the main idea that you will get from this slide. So the takeaway is, so what is the trend? You can see the trend of uh, different uh, uh, computation engines in terms of GPUs here. You can see uh, what are their performance density in terms of cops per millimeter square. And also the systems that are available with different feature map sizes. Okay, so higher uh, uh, compute density will be achieved by lower feature map sizes. So that is the intuition, uh, intuitive idea that, that, that is very easy to understand, right? So uh, now you, you, you want to achieve, you, you have seen from the previous section uh, that uh, your uh, compute density is kind of exponentially increasing. And your computation engine is kind of limited with this feature map sizes. You cannot put much more than, than that resource can, can allow you, right? So these are the two more, uh, much more important uh, uh, conclusions that we will take away after this slide. Now, next, uh, what we will do is that we'll go into some details of uh, evaluation of different uh, GPUs uh, from the mainstream NVIDIA GPUs that are available in market nowadays, and they have functional uh, number of functional units that are available. So increased number of functional units. So you can see that you are increasing the performance density and, and number of bobs or, or giga flops per second that you are achieving much more. So currently we have Ampere series of, uh, of uh, NVIDIA GPU, which has uh, several thousands of functional units that are available inside these uh, uh, inside these GPUs, okay? So we, we will see a uh, 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 much more clear way, like in a, in a very uh, coarser way, like what are the things available and how you can program them in the, in the next lecture, but we will see some abstraction of these uh, or, or, or some features of these uh, modern uh, GPUs which are available and also uh, uh, modern ASICs which are available and their performances, how they can be. Okay. So uh, in 2017, uh, NVIDIA released V100, uh, that is the folder series of NVIDIA GPU and Ampere series of GPU was, uh, was released in the year of 2020. And you can see that NVIDIA, in NVIDIA's terminology, uh, this uh, V100 comprises of 5,000, around 5,000 stream processors, so basically 80 cores with 64 CMD functional units, okay? And the uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, Ampere series having, this A100 having around 7,000 of stream processors, which can be interpreted as 1,108 cores with 64 CMD functional units. So these are the processing cores uh, or, or uh, this ASM uh, uh, stream processors that you can see here. It is having L2 cache also, uh, and it has also dynamic memory or DRAM, so which is this AHBM2 that you are seeing here, and the, the other interface that is available on this particular uh, systems. Now, uh, the basic difference of these two, you can see here, 
of course uh, in the micro architecture level there there are differences that that you will see but uh, but from the memory point of view you can see that l2 cache is now in the in the ampere series it is kind of uh, uh, banked into two uh, banks okay so l l2 cache 1 and l2 cache 2 and here in the voltage series the previous series having uh, only one cache maybe. and that is just to increase the throughput and 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 reduce the latency of memory accesses okay so now we, you can see that how much increase in the number of cores that can be accommodated in, into into one particular system okay so from 80 cores to 108 cores in two years okay? you can you can imagine like how much uh, progress that is happening and and how these these uh, systems are getting scaled uh, now from the point of uh, view of precision you can see that the tensor uh, this this series of uh, uh, gpus having tensor cores okay so tensor cores for machine learning is available in your voltage series in the uh, nvidia p100 as well as your ampere series but this having new floating point data type as tf32 okay so that gives a bit more flexibility in terms of uh, model training or benchmark training that 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 we'll be discussing in, in the coming classes but it supports also sparsity in the in machine learning code or, or ai benchmark so these two are very important uh, things to understand from the algorithmic point of view okay so uh, you can accommodate more number of computing cores and now your uh, your your cores also having tensor cores which are specialized in machine learning now if you see uh, the nvidia core one core itself you can see that so this is the core of v100 you can see that these are having this uh, floating point 64 so this is double precision in it integer units so basically these are uh, integer uh, units for mac operations so all these are mac units so the, you can see here floating point 16 2 will be multiplied and accumulated with the 32 bit of floating point then it will generate 32 bit of data right so uh, this this uh, these are floating point 32 bit unit as you can see here and then along with these uh, cmd processing units you have tensor cores and what does this tensor code do is that tensor core actually uh, does this matrix multiplication in one side so basically four cores four matrix multiplication will be done in one side one clock cycle to be precise now uh, why matrix multiplication is uh, is necessary and why we are telling or, or why we are uh, calling them tensor uh, tensor core so basically the data uh, uh, is uh, these tensor cores are employed or designed specifically to to run ai benchmarks which are deep neural network based or uh, convolutional neural network based uh, to be precise so these convolutional neural network based uh, computations need the, the the main engine is the convolution engine and the convolution can be trans uh, uh, transferred or or interpreted as matrix multiplication it can be converted to matrix multiplication so if you have matrix multiplication unit inside your uh, cmd of matrix multiplication unit you can perform the entire tensor of like set of input data so basically these two sets of data you can see 16 uh, cross 16 plus uh, you, you can accumulate another uh, 16 which is already there so in the in the accumulator and you will get the data of 16 uh, uh, entire so basically 16 mac operations you are doing in the one set. and that is how you can increase the throughput in uh, in, in many fold and that is the purpose of these tensor cores that are available in in modern computing engines now uh, we are talking about uh, tensor cores so that was the core available in the, the previous generation of nvidia gpus which are uh, v100 and then uh, we now have ampere series of uh, gpus and here you can see uh, in the cores you can see this uh, register file is there shared register file and then you have this uh, uh, 
same thing of integer 32, then floating point 32, floating point 64. So it supports all these different precisions of computation frequency. Okay. So all these units are basically this 32 unit, uh, 32 bit fixed point, 32 bit floating point, 64 bit floating point, all these units are mostly used in, in uh, accelerating your uh, your video processing and, and, and graphics benchmarks. And tensor cores are mostly used for your uh, AI benchmarks. Okay, so so that is why the, the modern GPUs that are coming with more number of tensor cores, and 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 the tensor core in the MPS series is even much more flexible than the earlier series. So there is a notion of sparsity in inside your uh, training or, or or inference in your AI benchmarks. So what is sparsity? Sparsity means uh, you can have multiple weights or parameters which are very close to zero can be interpreted as, as zero. And if you think from computation point of view, so if you have, let's say, four cross four matrix multiplier, and if you, let's say, half of the data is, let's say, zero, then you do not need to compute those for those particular half number of uh, multiplication. So that means uh, of course, that will be manifold for uh, for your 2D matrix multiplication, but you get the idea, right? So, so basically, for where uh, one operand is zero, you just don't don't do the multiplications. So, in 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 terms of energy efficiency, in terms of throughput, you can in, you can increase it manifold. Okay? So that is why the sparsity in the matrix multiplication is introduced in this tensor force that are available in, in Ampere series. Okay. Okay. So, uh, in overall idea, like uh, uh, voltage series, the the T4 series, the RTX series. So, what kind of uh, uh, performance or density they are getting with with particular uh, power envelope that you can see here in this table. Uh, again, this table is taken from this reference, and of course, I will give the link of this reference that you can go through after this class. But the main important thing is that you can increase the density here you can see only take particular for v100 and for v100 you can see that almost 10 times uh, 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 increase of performance density you can get just by using mixed uh, precision so mixed precision means in the in the whole computation engine you can, you can have 8 to 32 bits of of, of multiply and accumulate and, and, and with full precision, full means the double precision, you, you can see the GOPS and, and uh, one order magnitude you can get uh, the, uh, more performance density in, in, in 32 bit and even more you can get it if you go for mixed uh, precision. So precision, compute density, the, 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 the energy, the, you can see all they are in the same power envelope. So in the same power envelope, without uh, without without inducing more energy, you are actually uh, getting much more performance density. Okay, but of course, again, just to uh, uh, connect to that graph that we saw before, is that you cannot increase beyond certain point because the feature size you cannot decrease beyond certain. Point. Okay, uh, if you could decrease beyond certain point, then you you will go to atomic level of of, of, uh, of feature map size and but that is just theoretical okay so beyond one nanometer uh, it is it is very difficult because the the energy the the temperature that will be generated by the process uh, processing engines will be much much higher and it will be hard to uh, contain the uh, amount of temperature that will be generated okay so that's why you cannot go beyond a certain level of uh, uh, feature uh, size scaling. Now, in terms of APGA-based accelerators, APGAs are fully uh, reconfigurable, and 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 this is uh, the abbreviation of field programmable gate caddies, uh, which are field programmable means uh, these are mostly uh, 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 bit level configurable devices. Now, in the APGS, uh, 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 of course, you can employ uh, different ASIC 
level accelerators because it is fully configurable. But this slide presents different performances of different ASICs that are available. So what are different ASICs that are available? We have the TPU, which is Tensor Processing Unit from Google. So V1 is essentially only for, uh, only was published for influencing, but nowadays uh, V2, V3 and other uh, versions are employed in uh, Google data centers uh, for uh, large scale uh, deep neural networks training. And all these computation engines that you can see here, they are uh, essentially array of processing elements or, or they are called systolic array based uh, uh, engines. And these uh, processing engines, as you can see, these are just array of multiply and accumulate engines. And to feed the huge number of processing engines, you can see 12 cross 14 multiplication engines that are being employed in one. This is the first version of the TPU we are talking about. And, and one scratch pad memory is deployed to just feed these data hungry uh, uh, processing engines. Okay? And then you have the object DRAM to uh, uh, to offload the data to your scratch pad. So this this is the kind of architecture of ASIC based accelerators or ASIC based specialized AI engines that are available nowadays. And this is one picture uh, of uh, 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 Dadi and Nano that you are seeing here. And you can see that the GOPS that that can be achieved is is much more higher. Uh, with, of course, with, uh, you can see that how much in a, uh, power it, it is consuming. But of course, these are in terms of milliwatt, whereas, uh, whereas the power consumed by these GPUs are in, in terms of watt, as you can see, because of course, they are much more generalized in terms of computing systems. And these are much more specialized because these are only for, uh, uh, they only deploy, uh, only uh, these fixed precision or mixed precision multiply and accumulate engines only for these uh, processing engines. And that is why they consume much more, uh, much less uh, power, as you can see here. And uh, of course, uh, the FPGA based accelerators, as I was mentioning, that these arrays that you saw in the, in the AC based accelerators, they can be actually configured or programmed into the FPGA to emulate one, uh, one compute engine. Okay. So this is basically the, the figure of that array of multiply and accumulate processing engines and the memory hierarchy. And these engines are basically this convolution engines. These are problems and then you have multiply and accumulate. And then you have the uh, final, uh, the tree of uh, the multiply and accumulate engines. And then you have the, uh, the final output. Okay. So all these AI benchmarks are mostly uh, to, uh, to train your uh, uh, deep neural network benchmarks uh, to be precise. Well, from the market share point of view, so uh, what kind of market shares uh, in, in, in these, uh, these companies have in terms of different engines like GPU and FPGA based? So GPU based, of course, uh, uh, market is, is uh, uh, partially dominated by NVIDIA, 72.8% uh, and rest of the market uh, is, so these are the stocks of uh, after 2018 financial year. So uh, now the, the, the ratio might have changed slightly, but overall you can get the idea. And then we have uh, in the APG domain, we have Xilinx, Altera, MicroSemi and Lattice Semiconductors, uh, which has very uh, few share. Well, uh, these are the, uh, the systems that are available nowadays. Now we are talking about a gap. So this gap I several times mentioned in the, in the previous slides. We will just again go through this gap uh, just to uh, summarize whatever we have uh, studied. So, right? so what is the gap about? The gap is about, so to get particular uh, accuracy level. So if you want to get linear increase in accuracy, okay? So you need to exponentially increase the computation density. Okay? So this is the, 
the takeaway, this was the takeaway from the left, uh, left hand side graph. And the systems that are available, we, we know that mixed precision and different precision we can employ and we can have much more performance density, but of course there is some limit and, and we cannot go beyond certain limit of, of performance density, right? So, so the trend to, if you see the computation uh, requirement trend that is going exponentially and the resources that are available, the trend is, is kind of uh, uh, getting saturated, right? Because this, the feature size is almost going to, to your uh, uh, nanometer uh, level, right? So now, how we can bridge this gap? We, we want to accelerate the AI, that means the benchmark that we talked about. So these benchmarks, like all these different benchmarks that we, we, we have seen, and few of these we will see in details in, in the coming classes, because we need to employ or, or we need to implement them for, for a particular target device, right? Now, the gap is there. Okay? So this, this computational uh, uh, requirement or, or, or the, the, this, uh, the requirement of the computational density is going high exponentially and, and the performance density is getting saturated. So how we can accelerate some beyond certain things. Okay? So that is, this course all about. We will learn how to accelerate the AI benchmarks that we have seen with the systems that are available nowadays with us and how to employ several techniques from algorithmic to uh, different configurations in, in training, how we can with, with different uh, uh, libraries, with, with different SDKs, how we can actually uh, employ uh, efficiently these benchmarks onto these systems that is the goal of this course. And we will see uh, the implementation or, or how we, will, we can implement on these systems that are available in the coming lectures. So to conclude, uh, we have these references. So you can see that uh, we have the reference uh, uh, from Professor Mutlu. So you can, you can learn about the memory systems, the, the state of the memory technologies that are available nowadays. And, and of course, about the, the, the basics of these neural networks, the, specific, uh, the specialized computation engine, their performance and how this scaling happening from that algorithmic innovation point of view, as well as from the, uh, from the system level point of view and how we can actually merge them to get uh, better uh, computation and, and, and energy efficient computation performance-wise at high accuracy computation for these benchmarks, uh, you refer this uh, paper. Well, that's uh, all about uh, for today.